In this video, we're going to have a look at what is meant by the magnitude of a vector. Now, a vector's magnitude is just its size. And there are two ways uh, that we, we use to show that we're talking about a vector's size. Both of these will involve vertical lines either side of the vector's name. So you will either have the vector named by a single letter with two vertical lines either side of it, or you will have the start point and the end point with a direction arrow and that will be bounded by two vertical lines as well. So both these types of notation are used to describe a vector's magnitude. Now, to find magnitude, we just use Pythagoras. Okay. Now, because negative a all squared is the same as a squared, we can just use the components, square them, add them up together, and square root the whole thing to find the size of our vector. Okay. Now, looking at these four vectors here, we can see, for example, where the components come from. To go from B to C, you go along by 3, up by 4. That gives us our X component and Y component. For vector B, we're going along by 5, down by 2. And you can see where the 5 and the negative 2 come from. Now, if you want to find the length of the line going from B to C, you want to find the size of that vector. You just use Pythagoras, where you have a side of 3, and another side of 4. So you square each of the components, add them up, and then square root the whole thing to get your magnitude. And we can do a similar thing with each of our other components to find the magnitudes of the other three vectors. Now one thing just to be careful of is remember that a negative squared gives you a positive. Okay? So that's how you find the magnitude of a 2D vector. It's dead easy. Just use Pythagoras. Okay? So to sum up, take your components, apply Pythagoras theorem to them, and you get the magnitude, remembering to use the pro proper and correct notation. Now, we live in a 3D world, and a lot of the vectors that we will come across, and that you will come across, will involve three components. So, when you have a, a 3D vector, you're going to have three components. You're going to, uh, let's imagine that you want, you've got a point in three dimensions, we'll call it A, and let's say you want to describe the vector from the origin to A. Now that, to go from the origin to A, we go along the x-axis, back towards the y-axis, or along the y-axis, and up the z-axis. So we have three parts to our journey. So we're here going along three, back two, up five. So our column vector is going to have three components, an x component, a Y component, and a Z component. Notice that the order of the components follows the order of the letters in the alphabet. X, Y, Z. Now, when we're introducing you to 3D vectors, there's nothing to be worried about because the rules are exactly the same as with 2D vectors. You just think of these vectors as a set of directions. To add them, you just add the components. To subtract them, you subtract the components. To get the negative of that particular vector, you just change each of the signs within the components, you negate them. And the zero vector in 3D is just the vector where all three components are zero. Now, going back to our point A, if we want to find the journey, the length of the journey from the origin to A, we see here that we have a right angle triangle on the plane XY. And you also have a right angle triangle, which is a base shown by the green line and a height shown by the purple dotted line. Now, we use Pythagoras again, but we're just going to show you why this works. So, you have your right angle triangles identified. Now, to go from the origin to A, you know that that is just that side squared plus that side squared, and that would give you the hypotenuse squared. Now, OC squared, what is that? That's the hypotenuse of the smaller right angle triangle. So if we break this up and we can say, well, using Pythagoras and OB squared and BC squared, you could find the hypotenuse there, the green line squared. So you see how that our, our uh, vector here, 0A or OA, um, when you square that, what you've got is the base squared plus the height squared. Okay, and we've seen that we are ending up with three different things being squared and added up together. And you can see there that what you are squaring and adding together is just the components. 
you have your journey of 3, journey of 2, journey of 5. So whenever you are faced with a component vector in three dimensions, take each component, square it, add it up together, and then square root the whole thing, and you will find the magnitude. And as we said, you are using all three components. Now, again, just to recap, use the components, use Pythagoras, make sure you use the correct notation when you're working with 3D vectors. Let's have a look at some examples, okay? So, if we're asked to find the magnitude of these vectors, this one here, we take each of the components, square them, and find the sum of the three components, squared. So add them all up, square root the whole lot, we end up with the square root of 4, plus 1, plus 9. So we end up with a magnitude of the square root of 14, okay? And for this one, again, taking your components, so the magnitude of vector b would be the square root of taking your components 5, negative 1, and 2, square each other, and add them up, and we end up with the square root of 25 plus 1, because negative 1 squared is 1, and then we add the 4. So that's going to be the square root of 30. And that's all there is to it when you're finding the magnitude. So try these two yourselves. Pause the video, check back and see how you get on. So vector u here to find its magnitude. Take our components and add up the square of each of the components. Square root what you've got. So you end up with the square root of 9 plus 1 plus 36. So that is the square root of 46. And we'll just leave it like that. For this one, being careful because we have some negative components, the magnitude of b is going to be negative 2 all squared plus negative 2 all squared plus 6 squared. So what's that? That's the square root of 4 plus 4 plus 36, which is this time the square root of 44. So that's how you find the magnitude of vectors. Take your components and do Pythagoras on them, basically. So I hope that was helpful.